Hey guys. All right, so it's finally time to do the quadratic formula. So usually students don't enjoy the quadratic formula, mostly because they don't feel comfortable about why it works the way it does. And so we are going to, to derive the quadratic formula so we can, we can see how it works. Uh, but, but it is possible that you still don't fully understand all the mechanics afterwards. It, it is a little intricate to derive, but I like to think of it as kind of just learn the big steps of what's going on and then how to specifically apply the quadratic formula. Um, it's kind of like driving a car in that way where I'm not capable of building a whole car. Um, and I assume none of you guys are either. But, but I understand, and probably all of you understand, that a car is a piece of machinery with an engine that uses gasoline um, to make the wheels turn and you steer to drive. And everyone is comfortable, more or less, driving as well. Um, so maybe that's how we should think of the quadratic formula as we know the basic ingredients that go into it and we know how to use it. Even if we can't, even if we all can't necessarily derive the whole thing from scratch. And the main ideas that are going into this are using completing the square and a little bit of algebra manipulation. So if we start off with a quadratic, say we have, we're gonna start with a general quadratic, not a specific one. So just a quadratic that looks like ax squared plus bx plus c, and that equals zero, then First, we want a coefficient of one in front of the x squared. So we're going to divide everything by a. So that'll give us x squared plus b over a x plus c over a equals zero. Now, we're going to subtract the constant term onto the other side. So that gives us x squared plus b over a x equals negative c over a. And now we're gonna do, now we're going to complete the square. And so remember, to complete the square, what we do is we take b over a. And then we want to divide by 2 and then square it. So that gives us b squared over 4a squared. And that's going to be the term that we add to both sides of the equation. gives us x squared plus b over a x plus b squared over 4a squared equals b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. And we're going to take this one step further and make a common denominator. So to do that, we get b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. Now remember, the left-hand side is a, is a square quadratic now, which means we get to write it in that nice form that we saw in the last video. And if we just scroll up in our notes, um, there it is. 
And so we have that, that same, um, that same x plus p squared equals x squared plus 2px plus p squared. So that's going to tell us that the left-hand side can be rewritten as x plus b over 2a whole quantity squared equals b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Now our left-hand side is a square, and that means that we're gonna square root it because that's what we do when we have squares. So we get x plus b over 2a equals the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And the bottom of that, the denominator, is actually a square. 4a squared, when we square root that, we just pop out a 2a. And we still need a plus or minus. And so for our last step, we just subtract, um, subtract the b over 2a to the other side, and we get x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac whole quantity over 2a. And that is our quadratic formula. So it just comes right out from completing the square and having a little bit of algebraic manipulation going on. And we can use this formula to solve any quadratic equation that's given to us, um, as long as that quadratic is set equal to zero. And remember, if it's not set equal to zero, we just subtract one side to the other side, and then it is set equal to zero, and we apply the quadratic formula to that. All right, so the quadratic formula is incredibly nice because it's really just a plug and chug formula. That means once you're given a quadratic, you can solve it almost immediately by just plugging in some numbers. There's, there's not too much thought about what has to, get, what has to happen. Um, so we'll run through some examples. So example one, we want to solve x squared plus 5x minus 3 equals 0. Um, so we look at this, this quadratic. We notice it has a middle term. So immediately that means that the difference of squares technique is apt. Um, we can try the diamond method, but I think you guys could spend all day trying to find the two numbers that add to five and multiply to negative three. And most of you would probably fail. I know I would fail at trying to find those numbers. So we apply the quadratic formula to it. And we're just gonna plug in the numbers we see. So x equals negative b. In this case, five is our b, negative three is our c, and one is our a. So x equals negative five plus or minus the square root b squared, that's five squared, so that's 25 minus four times c. Our a is just one, so we'll just ignore that for now and divide everything by two. So we get x equals negative five plus or minus the square root of 37 all over two. And this is why I said the diamond method would have been hard because we would have had to come up with the numbers um, five halves plus the square root of 37 over two and five halves minus the square root of 37 over two. I don't think um, we would have been capable of doing that. Um, this, is, this isn't a number that you just come up with like two or three. But this, but this illustrates why I love the quadratic formula though. You, you just plug in numbers and you're good to go. 
Um, you don't have to worry about trying to find a certain pair that works or rely on a clever technique. You just remember a formula and you plug in the coefficients and you're done. All right, so example two. We want to solve 25 x squared minus 49 equals zero. Now this is one that we can use the difference of squares because it doesn't have that middle term. And so we take the difference of squares, we get 5x minus 7, 5x plus 7 equals 0. And then we just want to solve. So if we have 5x minus 7 equals 0, then that implies that 5x equals 7, just adding 7 to the other side and then dividing by five is that x equals seven bits. And on the, for the other factor, we will just pick up x equals negative seven bits. Um, but work that out if that doesn't feel um, completely obvious to you. And at this point in the course, I wouldn't expect it to feel completely obvious to anyone. And so we can also try solving this with the quadratic formula as well. We'll take x equals, in this case, our negative b. b is going to be 0 because, it's, because there's no middle term plus or minus the square root of zero is zero squared is zero minus four times a times c. All over two times a. And now we just start to simplify. So the top becomes the square root of 4 times 25 times 49. And the bottom becomes 50. Now here's a really nice trick, though. When you have the square root of the product of squares, you can actually just um, take the square root of the individual terms. So that means we really have 2 times 5 times seven, all over 50. And we need a plus minus there, plus minus there. And that becomes plus or minus seven over five. All right, and then one last quadratic to solve. We have x squared plus five x. Not now, Siri. Plus four equals zero. Um, this is one that you can apply the diamond method on, and I encourage you to try it right now. Just pause the video and try the diamond method. For the quadratic formula, we're just going to start plugging in numbers again like we've done before. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4, a is 1, c is 4, all over 2. Times negative 5 over 2 plus or minus the square root 9 over 2, which is three halves, sorry. Negative five over two plus or minus three halves. 
So therefore, our final solution is x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 4. All right, and there you have it. So that's how you can quickly apply the quadratic formula to solve any quadratic you want. Just identify your coefficients and plug them in. Very straightforward. All right, one last video, and that's it for section 1.3.